Well, let's go into the stadiums then. Let's go into the first ground, Exeter, Leicester match. Did you guys, were you surprised how many kicks there were in play, 103 in total? Or is that just how you win games of rugby these days, Goody? Just get the ice on the feet because everyone was hoofing it. Um, yeah, it was, it, listen, that's, there's different ways of skinning the cat in terms of how you play the game, right? And, you know, there was a very different game between Newcastle and Harlequins up in the northern most part of the country on Saturday as well. Um, but Leicester, we know how they play. They won the league last year by playing that way. Um, they had only five players, I think, in the starting 15 um, this weekend that started that Premiership final um, only a few months ago. So they were obviously going to stick to what was their strength last year of playing a, a you know a big kicking game, winning that territorial battle. Exeter actually paid them respect and saying, when you're playing a team like Leicester that just kick it, and kick it a lot and, and play it in that certain way, you've got to kick it back and try and win that kicking battle because what they want to do is put pressure on you and force you into errors. And that's where Exeter were kicking it more than usual than we usually see them kicking it. But it's a way to try and beat a team that does that. And um, oh, listen, you know, you can go back and everyone wants to see the, the ball being chucked around here, there and everywhere and, you know, th- from your own try line. And we saw some tries like that over the weekend in different games. Um, but if you look at history and if you look at, the teams that win the tournaments the most, it's generally the teams that kick the ball the most. And I think they came out with a stat on BT Sport around uh, the percentage of wins um, at, in terms of kicking it over a certain amount. And I haven't got the exact stats, so I'm not going to make it up. But you look at every team that's won a major tournament, they're probably the teams that kick the most. Um, and it's you know, and that's what Leicester did. And, and unfortunately for me and, and for Leicester fans, they came up short, but credit to Exeter. Um, they stayed in that battle and, you know, that they ended up getting the try towards the end, shickling scores and they win. But um, yeah, different ways to skin a cat. It wasn't the most entertaining game if you're uh, someone that wants to see a Harlequin style, but each their own that you've got to try and pick a team and, and pick a, a set of tactics that is the the most beneficial to your strengths as, as a team and as a squad. And that's what Steve Borthwick thinks. And Unfortunately, they came up short the weekend just, but it won them a title last year. So, um, you know, different ways to skin a cat, eh, Jim? You can't yes. skin cats, though. You can't skin cats. No, you can't. No, but you can shave them. And that is even more the worry because when you shave a cat, it looks horrendous, unless you <laughs> like that. You get these bold ones, don't you, that actually look cool as fuck. Actually, let's skin them all. But I watched that game, and I'm a man who likes kicking. Okay, played in a system where... We kicked a lot and we won a lot. And I played in a system with Scotland back in the day under Andy Robinson where we never kicked the ball and we just tried to offload and kept knocking it on and getting scrum, getting turned over and getting beat by 40, 50 points. So I like kicking, right? The issue is, Goody mentioned it there, the lads on BT Sport spoke about it. And if you look now with what BT Sport are doing now with the rugby, I think one aspect of growing the game, and we can talk about maybe Simon Massey on BT Sports Rugby tonight, is educating people. So it feels like we're being educated now on BT Sport and they're talking about stats. And one of the headline stats is what Goody mentioned around the kicking. And obviously, all the directors of rugby, all the clubs have got access to these stats significantly in a better position to talk about it and implement it than we are. And it is all around teams that kick the most, that win things. South Africa, prime example as well. Faf de Klerk with the old box kick, the risk adverse. And that is the worry, isn't it, for rugby? Because on one hand, we're talking about growing the product, making it entertaining. And if you're a rugby first at the weekend, and that's the first time you've been to a game at one of the best stadiums in the Premiership at Sandy Park, and you're watching that, you're thinking, come on. Like what? Like it's almost quite soulless when you're in that, Jewel and it's not even kick for to, comp- to compete and yes there were a few and we saw Coley getting one smashed off his forehead and Leicester end up scoring off the back of it but it's the long kicks and I put a tweet out saying why don't we reduce the amount of kicking and just cap it and you know people are coming back I oh, like it ain't rugby league and whatever and all this bollocks but for me I don't think that that as a product is going to grow the game albeit if you end up winning something at the end of it it will be very nice but I didn't think it was a very good game until the end, really, where Exeter were obviously chasing to try and win and they ended up doing. But I didn't enjoy kicking the balls as much as I used to. Pod, 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 pod. Rugby pod. As a fly half who likes to run the ball, but there's this big play now to kick the ball, especially off nine. Can you give us a bit of insight into 
we think we know the reasons why, but can you give us a bit of insight as a fly half who wants to play rugby, why there is so much kicking? Usually when teams win games, it's, it's teams that have kicked more. And that's not necessarily kicking aimlessly, it's, it's kicking for territory. It's about, you know, squeezing teams in their own half. You look at the way Wasps did that to us. We had one entry, as I said, into their 22. And, you know, you're trying to suffocate a team in their own half and eventually they might try run it out and that's when you catch them, you'll get a penalty and then um, you can build a score or you'll get a couple of tries here and there, which which you've seen with our game. Um, so, yeah, look, I think it's about picking your moments when to run, but when teams are box kicking back at you, you're getting absolutely nailed. They're flying into that first breakdown. You can't play off slow ball there. Or you're just kind of asking for it a little bit. So, um, yeah, that's kind of the mindset with us anyway. And I think a lot of the teams you'll have seen at the weekend. Yeah, because we're saying that, but surely on that, uh, Hasto, is a lot of teams would have watched Saracens and would have watched South Africa kick loads. It just seems to be like the start of this season and BT Sport have made a big thing about it and showing the stats and they've spoken about it as well. Why this season? I mean, is it because it's is it become that obvious and the stats have been given to you that obviously that that is why you need to kick? Yeah, in a way, yeah, I think you've said it there. I think the, the top four teams last season were probably teams that kicked the ball the most. Um, you know, even a team like Harlequins, everyone thinks they, they you'd associate them with, with running the ball loads, but they're one of the top kicking teams last year, I think, as well. Um so yeah, it's a funny one. You you sometimes you're playing games and you set up a kick and you can hear the cr- crowd groaning again. Oh no, not another one. They're your home fans as well, but there is a reason behind it. There's a process, and um, yeah, when you get the when you get the win, I think they they kind of understand that a little bit. And talking about um, obviously the process around it. So in training, you're going to be drilling these, and it's it's the minute details of it, isn't it? Who's in what position to chase, and how hard you go. You know, I used to have to chase with Jim sometimes, and it was basically walking speed. So um, it was fucking, it was hard work. Um, but in terms of you've got Lewis Reece Samet, you've got Johnny May, uh, Ollie Thorley as well. They're just doing a lot of the time doing these sprints. No wonder they're so fucking quick. They're just sprinting up and down, chasing box kicks the whole time, right? <laughs> um, yeah, they can shift those boys, can't they? I mean, Zam's try was mental. He did that with a, a broken lace as well, which was no, not a broken. I mean, we were chatting, but not a broken lace. Is that why he was pissed off? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not really sure why. I mean, when he went, when he got the ball, in in my head, I was thinking, I'll oh, try, try that. Yeah. Bloody hell, Ali Crossdale's got a set of wheels as well, doesn't he? He was on his toes, and I thought, oh my god, and I. I kind of buttoned off for half a second. I was thinking, oh, right, this will be 80 metres. And then he just wasn't pulling away. And I seen this big string hanging out his boot. And I was like, oh, my God, this is it. He'll trip over his laces in 10 metres now. And then I'll have to hit a rock, which I love doing. But, um, yeah, no, I think, yeah, look, it's it, the game's changed a little bit. I think it's, it's part of the those back three's job now and those wingers. They're not just getting the ball and and running in tries, I think this is a, a big part of their game now as well. There's is, is a lot of kick chasing and making those hits. And, um, so, yeah, some boys will enjoy that more than others. Um, I think Zamper is running, running in 80-metre tries. Though. 